So how do we get things done through other people? Some people are easier to get things done through than others. How do we get the right people? If we knew how to get the right people, we would have the right people in organizations and we wouldn't be having to have this talk here today. Let's back up a little bit and talk about uh, management. And I also, the history of management, I also want to just give you uh, an explanation of some of the terms that we throw around in this course. So let me walk over to the uh, whiteboard to illustrate this a little better. So some of the terms that you are going to hear uh, us use when we talk about management, uh, you are in this section here, the OBHR. OBHR, what does, what does that mean? Well, organizational behavior and human resources. And these two things go together uh, hand in glove. Notice that when we talk about OBHR, we're looking at the micro aspect of an organization. We're looking at the people on the ground, right? So when we talk about getting the right people in the job, you know, uh, next class you're gonna be looking at personality. Some personalities are better suited for some jobs than others, right? If we <clears throat> are using our delivery driver as an example, you know, do we want a delivery driver that is high on extroversion? Well, you know, <laughs> probably not. We want someone that's probably high on conscientiousness uh, and he doesn't have a, that person, she or he wouldn't have a lot of interaction. So probably, uh, an introvert would be better at, a deli at delivery than an extrovert. That, it's a little messy and we'll worry about that next class. But organizational behavior is more the uh, theoretical part. The theoretical part of the individual person. Organizational behavior says we have to look at the context and the individual. Behavior always happens in a context. A context shapes people's behavior, but also people even within that context, the same context, will behave differently. So we have individuals, this is looking at individuals, and is the, the theoretical piece, which is then put into action by HR, or human resources. Human resources is the hiring, the firing, the compensation, the attracting of people, the training of people, all of those little details, you know, that aren't maybe as sexy as something like strategy or innovation or entrepreneurship. But you know, if you don't have the right people, you're in for a world of trouble, right? So human, rela human relations that are, sorry, human resources takes organizational behavior and it's used by management to enact a strategy, right? So the strategy will say something like, okay, if we are, human oh, resources, uh, if we are, what our strategy is, we should have the right people for that. What is the strategy for the people and do we have the people for the strategy? Where does, and this is where it's, it's helpful just to go uh, step back a little bit and look at the history of management. In terms of management history then, uh, where do things begin? Well, uh, you can refer to the slides for this, looking at the work of Fail and, and Max Weber, et cetera. I'm gonna pick it up with Frederick Taylor. And Frederick Taylor, I'm just gonna contract there. Frederick Taylor is uh, the pioneer of something called scientific management. And his big thing is the one best way. So Frederick Taylor looks at organizations and says, what is the best way of doing something? We tend not to think about this, right? What is the best sequence of events? What is the best way to do a job? Frederick Taylor is looking at manual labor. So Frederick Taylor wants to know what's the best way to shovel coal? What is the right size shovel for coal? What's the right size wheelbarrow for coal? Instead of just letting the worker come and pick the shovel, uh, Frederick Taylor says, no, I will give you the shovel and I want you to follow my instructions to a T because that's the best way to do it. There is one best way to shovel. So you think about shoveling, most of us just pick up a shovel and go, Frederick Taylor would say, <clears throat> okay, if you are 6'2", 
what size of shovel should you have? How much should you bend your legs? Where should your body be, your body position be? Where should your hands be on the shovel? Those are all the questions that Frederick Taylor is asking and saying, let me tell you what to do and I will show you the one best way to do things. Frederick Taylor revolutionizes, revolutionizes uh, the industry. Factories, manual labor, etc. He absolutely revolutionizes this because he makes a tremendous boost in production. So instead of someone shoveling, <coughs> I can't remember the numbers, but instead of someone shoveling, shoveling nine tons of coal, they're able to shovel 17 tons of coal because they follow his instructions to a T. I'll use a different example uh, about Frederick Taylor and I'll walk back over here. So where uh, a great ex example of Frederick Taylor is uh, football. So if you look at football quarterbacks, you'll notice that they are tall people, right? Uh, average football quarterbacks about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, you want tall people because, so they can see over the front line. They have a better field of vision. Also, the, the taller you are, the greater, your, the greater your arm span. If I can uh, show you an arm span here. The greater your arm span, the more right, the more power you can get into the throw and the better you can throw the ball. Another metric that I was telling Tyler that they use in the NFL is hand size. So they measure uh, the, foot, the quarterback's hands. They also use personality tests. They also use cognitive ability tests. They also use physical ability tests to measure the quarterback to see is this the right person for the job. Frederick Taylor will say, look, instead of just hiring people, we got to get the right person for the job. If we need someone to hire, uh, if we need to hire someone to shovel coal, we need big people, not little people with good personalities, right? Frederick Taylor will say with football, there's one best way to do it. And indeed, there is a best way of doing it. So the first thing that they will, that Frederick Taylor would say, and if you go to a, a football camp, they will show you the best way what is the best way to hold a football, right? Frederick Taylor would say, you know, there is one best way to hold a football. You should have, you know, it should be like this. This is where your hand should be on the football. Uh, second, when you're receiving the snap, your fingers, your thumbs should be like this. Not like this, like this so that they're just nestled in right like that. Your right foot should be ever so slightly, if you're right-handed, should be ever so slightly back of your left foot. You come back. What is the optimum number of steps for a quarterback to take to move back in the pocket to release the ball? NFL football, I use that as an example because it most clearly demonstrates the triumph of Taylorism. How many seconds do you have to get the ball out? right? How much time does a quarterback have? If he takes this many steps, how long does it take? If he has two seconds, how many steps can he take? How far can he throw the ball? What play? <clears throat> what play can we run, right? Because if the team's blitzing, I know I don't have time to go back and to, to throw, you know, to throw a long bomb, right? To, to throw the one. So I need to do something really quick. If I'm doing something quick, how many steps, what throw? Uh, they will, uh, when, in training a quarterback, there's actually a harness that you wear that keeps your, uh, whew, must be cold out, uh, it keeps your arms up like this with your elbows back because you want to be up like this and when you throw, right, you come through and this hand will follow right through to the inside of your groin, right? So you come through right like that and you will end square to the person that you're throwing the ball. Now, someone like Patrick Mahomes, of course, he can do everything because he's Patrick Mahomes. And he's amazing, and, I mean, he is the, absolutely the quarterback of our generation. But that's another story. So Frederick Taylor is still used in things like professional sports because there is one best way to throw a football. There is one best way to shoot a puck. How can I get the most energy possible uh, on that puck through me through this, uh, from me through the stick to the puck on the net. How can I throw a, a baseball to go 90 miles an hour? Well, first of all, <laughs> you probably can't. <laughs> Only some people could do that, right? The average person throws a ball 
about 60 miles. 60 miles an hour is a hard throw for the average person. <laughs> so just, just saying, if you can throw 90 miles an hour with accuracy, uh, maybe quit being a student and uh, go try out for the majors because there's a lot more money there, I'm just saying. Frederick Taylor, though, with his one best way, revolutionizes industry and is still with us in things like sports, right? But notice that in this demonstration here of throwing a football, and if you were here, I'd, I'd, I'd love to throw the football with you, but, you know, I can't. So notice that this is a manual task, though. And most of our jobs today are not manual. So if you think about a customer service rep or retail, you know, that's not really a manual job. So when I'm hiring someone for retail, I'm not necessarily looking at their physical attributes. You know, I don't need someone that's 6'4". I don't need someone that can run the 40 in like, you know, whatever, a 440 or something or a 450. I don't need that kind of physical, I need something else. And in watching the video of Zappos, which you'll get to, you notice that they have to, it requires a different kind of person. In watching Henry Ford, who revolutionizes the production line, there's a certain kind of person that is needed there. Fun little, fun little fact for you, Henry Ford once fired someone for laughing on the job. Henry Ford believed that you were more efficient if you were serious and not having a good time. Concentrate on your task, that's what you do. You do your job, you don't smile, you don't laugh, you don't talk to the person beside you, you do the job. That's very different than Zappos though. Zappos is a company that wants people who are creative and innovative and able to <coughs> talk to customers and give the absolute best in customer service. I'll, uh, this is going a little long, but I'm just gonna do one quick story about Zappos and just to show you how different it is from what Frederick, Frederick Taylor is talking about. And it requires a very different kind of management style. If I'm teaching you to throw a football, right, I am going to be making a harness for you to wear. I'm gonna be measuring out how many steps you take. I can put little footprints on the ground that you put your feet in to make sure that you are learning those. And then it's all about muscle memory. I just get you doing it over and over and over again, right? The 10,000 hours. My daughter was, uh, was in diving. She was a national, national level diver. And she would practice over and over and over the same blessed thing. If you have ever seen a basketball player or a pro basketball player practicing, it is the most boring thing you will ever see. The same shot over and over and over. And then a little variation and the same shot over and over. Teaching that muscle memory. Compare that with Zappos. So Zappos is all about customer service, right? Online shoe retailer, and their thing is you have a year to return the product. Exemplary product, exemplary uh, customer service, excellent products. If we were in class, and I often do this in class, I would have you go online and strike up a conversation with one of their customer reps. And one time we got the person you know, on the big screen and she was talking to us about her job. She had moved to uh, Vegas to work at Zappos from Virginia because she said it was just such an amazing and wonderful place to work. Uh, and their benefits were wonderful and the company really takes care of you. One day this guy decides he's gonna buy his mom a pair of shoes. Uh, his mom's older, she's been in the hospital, not been well. So he says, mom, buy me a pair of shoes. She says, I can never get shoes that fit me. They're always kind of, you know, wonky. He says, you know what, mom? I got you. We're going to buy three pairs of shoes. You get the same shoes, three pairs, eight, eight and a half, and a nine. Whichever one fits you, we keep. The other two we send back because Zappos will take them. No questions asked for up to a year. So he gets the shoes. Mom is sick. She goes in the hospital. She's out. She's back in. This goes on for a while, and, then, and, and she dies. She passes away. So... Uh, the, the son is going through the closet, looking at this, and he's like, oh my gosh, I got these three pairs of shoes here that I got from Zappos. It's been more than a year, right? It's been more than a year. 
so he calls up the customer service rep and says, I got these three pairs of shoes here, and I'm, I'm just kind of wondering, what do I do with these shoes? Can I send them back to you? Will you take them? Will you give me a refund? Uh, do I get store credits? Should I donate them? What, what do I do? In a typical hierarchical structure, which is what you see at Vita Needle, which is the other clip for, it, for this section, when, I, when the person has a problem, they immediately ask their superior, and it goes up the chain of command until an answer or a solution is reached, and then it comes down. So if I say to you, what would you do if this person has called up and says he wants to return the shoes? They haven't been worn, but it's more than a year. What are you going to do about that? You would probably say, gee, I, I don't know what to do. I'd have to ask my manager. But Zappo says, no, instead of being this traditional structure like that, we're, we're this structure here where the people on the front line are able to make the decision and management supports them. A very different conception than what we see in Frederick Taylor and others, which I'll talk about on the slide, so don't worry about it. So the lady at the, that's answering this guy's phone call says to him, you know what, sir, there will be a truck outside your house tomorrow and we will give you a full, a full refund. I know it's been more than a year, but you know what? Your circumstances, et cetera, we'll take the shoes back, okay? So they, the next day, there's a knock at the door, and the driver shows up, says, yeah, I understand you got some shoes here for us or something, and this guy says, yeah, I got these three, three boxes here, and he gives them, the guy says, uh, here's the check for the full amount, and I have one more thing for you. Goes, uh, takes the shoes out, comes back with a bouquet of flowers and a card, from, uh, signed by the person that he was talking with, and it says, Dear sir, so sorry to hear for, for your loss. Uh, please accept this, these flowers on our behalf, kindly, and her name and the Zappos team, right? That's brilliant. Uh, and notice that this is a different kind of situation. How do we hire someone to get, who will give us that kind of customer service, right? Is that person, you know, it's not going to be as simple as saying, I need someone who is 6'4", with big hands, who can do these things to throw a football. This is a different kind of situation. And it requires that their human resource system is going to be looking or screening for different traits. How do you screen for that? HR is one of the most uh, complicated and sophisticated instruments that organizations have for screening out people, for getting the right people in the right job. That is not an easy thing to do. This is why Jeffrey Pfeffer says, you wanna talk about competitive advantage, it's the people. The people in the organization are your ultimate source of competitive advantage. That cannot be imitated by other people. Management is getting things done through other people. The dude driving the truck didn't stop to drop off the wine. The lady on the phone stops and gives this guy a full refund, takes an extra step, step sends him flowers. What's the difference? Well, first of all, <clears throat> we could say the difference is in the actual people who are doing the job, but also how the organization has trained, how they've acclimated these people, what the values are, and also how they have supported these people in the role. Uh, I'm gonna stop right there because I don't want this video to get too big, otherwise it just crashes the system. So I'll stop there and then I'll talk a little bit more because that's what I'm paid to do.